So, I needed to do a painting of the game Asteroids. Believe it or not, Asteroids is about 40 years old now, and it's simplistically beautiful. I encourage you to find it in an arcade to play it. The noise, the sound effects, the vibration, and the old screen, those things really bring you into the game. As I began to study it before I painted it, which might sound silly because it's so simple, but in order to make a good painting, you have to make sure you understand the movement and the patterns and all of that. It kind of reminded me of sitting in my film and my photography classes in college as we would study silver halide crystals. Now, what are those? When you look at black and white film, you're probably just seeing a bunch of gray. Maybe you just think of it as black and white, but what you're actually seeing is millions of molecules of silver bound together in this kind of gelatin form that eventually makes up your image. When you look under a microscope, this is what you see. And yeah, it kind of reminds me of asteroids. So with the silver in mind, and how beautiful black and white film can be, and how beautiful I think Asteroids is as a simple game. Instead of painting the game in black and white, I decided I was going to paint it with silver. But I wanted to turn it up just a little bit, exaggerate that color just a little bit more. So I picked up some mirror paint for the project. And this is how this project goes. So first, I used some plain old black paint. Nothing special, just black acrylic paint. Then I decided I was gonna use iridescent medium from Liquitex. This will kind of give the black this metallic, pearlized look. I'm not using this to lean into the metallic aspect of this painting, but I want to give the black paint a very subtle space nebula effect. Then I decided I was going to use black holographic flakes. I use black so it doesn't really wash out the black paint. Still want to keep it pretty dark, right? But the reason that I'm using holographic flakes instead of just some silver glitter or something is because you get multiple colors. You get that red and you get that blue. You get these colors that would actually be in the night sky if you look at stars twinkle. And then here's my little bottle of mirror paint. This is a 15 milliliter bottle, which is like half an ounce, and I paid $35 for it before shipping. Anyway, I get the black, the iridescent medium, and the holographic flakes all mixed up. I used a pretty liberal amount of the holographic flakes because it kind of get washed out by the black paint otherwise. Oh, and I use a little bit of water to kind of thin it out too. Also, I use a fan brush to apply this, just like that color shifting pigment in the last video. The holographic flakes will kind of get caked into a normal paintbrush and it won't unload onto the canvas properly. It'd be a waste of money and a frustration. You won't see the flakes on the canvas. Now this will require a couple of coats, but that's okay. So I let that completely dry, then I added a second coat to it. I only needed two coats. You might need more if you try it. Just make sure you get complete coverage. That's really what counts. Before I decided to purchase the mirror paint, I actually watched Stewart's video about how to use it. And I'm really glad that I did. He shows that if you paint it on like a you know, plastic or a metal surface or something that's not porous, it reflects beautifully. But if you paint on a surface that's porous like wood, paper, it takes several coats. It kind of just like soaks it right up unless you put down, I think he said he uses like PVA glue or something underneath it in order to keep it from doing that. So what I did for this canvas was I put my artist varnish on to get the background nice and colored to really make it pop, but also to seal it so I could paint with this reflection mirror paint on top of it and it wouldn't soak through. The result was pretty fantastic. Now before I get too ahead of myself, I had to sketch the game onto the canvas. Makes sense, right? And I thought, oh, okay, I'm sketching on black. Let me grab a white pencil of some sort and this will be easy. And it was. <laughs> this is where things get a little weird. I would have done this differently. If I could go back and do it again, I would have just used a white paint pen and made very straight lines instead of sketching with a pencil. I'll tell you why later. So I open up the mirror paint. Seems pretty reflective. I'm actually really impressed. And I have like a little glass jar that I decided I want to pour a little into. That way I can just work out of the jar and cap it up as needed. Realistically, I could have just stuck my paintbrush down into the little container that they gave me, but that doesn't really matter now. Anyway, it poured out a lot faster than I anticipated. So I had to grab a rag to make sure it didn't drip anywhere, but I was really excited to work with it. It looked really cool. My experience painting with this stuff was actually really nice. It's a very fluid paint, and much to my surprise, 
it went really far. I was really nervous about the small amount that I paid for, but this stuff goes a long way. Now in the video, it kind of just looks white and that's due to the big overhead light that I have. I mean, you can see that reflecting off of the canvas anyway. But if we look a little bit closer at a different angle, you can really see the reflection of the paint and how the paintbrush reacts to it when it kind of dips into it. And then when we look even closer, as I begin to paint with this, you can see it just flowing, unloading right off of the paintbrush directly onto the canvas. It's actually pretty easy to work with. Admittedly, it was a little awkward trying to mess with the camera and paint really straight lines at the same time, but that's a me problem that doesn't have anything to do with the paint. And here's that result that I showed at the beginning. Man, this stuff is beautiful. It turned out great. You can't really see a lot of the background. That's just how I filmed it. But this is also where things got a little weird. You know how I said, if I could go back, I wouldn't use that pencil. I'd just use a paint pen and make really fine straight lines. Oh, this is why. I have to go back and clean up some of those white sketch lines. When you sketch, it's not pretty. Your lines are kind of all over the place, right? Well, not a big deal. I had some black paint left over from my mix. So I took my liner and I went over all of those white scratches. Super simple, not a big deal. Except for the fact that my black paint is matte. Obviously, this isn't matte anymore because I put varnish down before I put the silver down. Well, also, not a big deal. I could just use another varnish coat right on top, make everything super nice and shiny. As I pour on the varnish, it's exactly what I want. It adds a little more contrast, and look at that sparkle. This is just awesome! The matte paint just disappears. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, and so did the mirror paint. The moment the varnish hit the mirror paint, it just dissolved off the canvas. I was so stunned! I've never seen this happen. I've painted a lot, I've varnished a lot. I let this dry over 24 hours. It was completely dry and set. The moment this varnish hit it, it just dripped right off the canvas. If I didn't need to clean up those matte lines, this wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have even thought about going back to varnish over it again. I didn't need it. The mirror paint was too nice, but it doesn't hold up to varnish at all, and I had no idea. There was, to my knowledge, no kind of warning about that, which is really frustrating with a pretty expensive paint. Do I recommend the mirror paint? Yeah, it's it's great. It's a beautiful paint. This was a beautiful painting. Just don't varnish it. So I'm gonna go cry and repaint this, and then go film my next video. So if you want to see some weird stuff with paints, go ahead and subscribe. I've got you covered.